Morning everyone, welcome back to our channel, we are Holiday with the Heathers. If you have enjoyed this video at the end, please give it a huge thumbs up. If you would like to subscribe to our channel, we would really appreciate it, so we would love if you could hit that subscribe button. And if you would like to keep up to date with all of our content, please hit that notification bell, we would love that also, it really, really helps. Today, Wayne and I are on our first staycation of 2021 2020 it's the first time we've been away anywhere in about 14 months so before we get into this exciting vlog cue the intro hi we're holiday with the heathers we are a married couple who have been lucky enough to have traveled to over 20 destinations over the past eight years experiencing the culture and cuisine the world has to offer Although the world has come to a standstill, you can still follow our life's journey by watching our weekly vlogs. We know the prospect of travel is uncertain. We don't know where, we don't know when, but we will fly again someday. Good morning to you all folks. As you can see, it's a very early start for us in the morning. Apologies for this, I've only been out of bed for say 10 minutes. Um, it's really, really early as you've just seen. It's literally just gone for quarter past five. Um, the reason why we're up to date at Stupid O'Clock is because we're off to Manchester. Woohoo! So it's currently Tuesday the 18th of May and yesterday the lock lockdown restrictions here in the UK were eased. So then now that means we can go to bars, clubs, pubs and restaurants and so on to eat outside. Previously it was only for outdoor eating but obviously with the UK weather as it is, it's a bit hit and miss. So I think the country is definitely happy that we can now sit and drink and eat inside. So that is really good news to start the day off. Also, the government have announced that football fans, like myself, can now attend their football stadium to watch their team play uh, at a reduced capacity. With that being said, uh, Man United on their website a few weeks ago announced that they was going to be selling 10,000 tickets to Man United members at a reduced capacity stadium, uh, social distancing rules obviously apply, and that they'll be going on sale from a certain date, and if you wanted a ticket, you have to uh, sign up and, um, what's the word I'm looking for, show your interest and you're going to a ballot. Now, I wasn't a Man United member this year. I mean, I have been a member for the last 15 years, but this year, at the start of the season, for my birthday, Jessica got me the membership, but it was in her name, and it's an accessibility membership. That means that she can come with me to home games as well, uh, and I'll go for free on my carer's card. Now, I must uh, say this, that if Jessie's family are watching, she's not a Manchester United fan. She's still a proud Liverpool fan. It's just that when I've been to Manchester United, Manchester United games before, she's had to wait in the hotel for a couple of hours. But unfortunately, this season, or this year, I should say, her health has taken a bit of a decline. And with her pots now that she's now been diagnosed with, she has a tendency to collapse and faint and that and I really don't want the thought of her being in a, a hotel room on her own whilst I'm at the game. So last season, or just before this season started, sorry, just decided wouldn't it be good if she got the membership in her name and then I could go for free. I'll still pay obviously for the ticket but there'd be two people for the price of one. So that's what we plan to do. So we entered the ballot uh, about 10 days ago. Uh, 
Before we book the ticket, I thought that travel and hotels are going to be very scarce up, uh, in Manchester as soon as other fans like myself are going to buy tickets. So before the ballot even was done, or we could even enter the ballot, I booked a hotel uh, It's about six, seven minutes away from the stadium and I also booked transport up there just in case we were successful and got the tickets. So at the weekend, uh, we was talking and Jess and I decided that whether or not we were successful with the ballot we'll still go to Manchester anyway just because she's been shielding for near enough a year we're allowed to go back out now obviously we can socialise indoors we can have some food and some drinks and just try and get back to some sort of social distance normality so we came to the conclusion that uh, whether or not we was um, successful in our tickets we'll still go so I made sure that the hotel and the transport that I booked had COVID insurance just in case obviously we didn't realize that we was going to go anyway but at the time of me booking the transport and the hotel I made sure that I had insurance just in case we didn't go and I could get my money back but anyway going back to this weekend or last weekend we decided that we was going to go either way um, like I said, we both deserve a little trip, it's like our little staycation this week. So we thought, yep, whether or not we get the tickets, we're going to go. Now, unfortunately, uh, Saturday afternoon, we got the email from Man United um, confirming that we was unsuccessful in our bid, which I am pretty gutted about. So... I had it in my head that we'll be going to see the game and I've been really looking forward to it to be honest. Um, I've not been feeling myself the last couple of days. I'm still waiting for my driving license to come back from Swansea so with my provisional on it so I can do my HGV. And it's really, really getting me down at the moment because I sent it away about eight weeks ago and it's still not back and it's really getting me down. So this trip was just to perk me up and it was gonna do wonders for Jess as well. So uh, we made the decision, like I said, we was going to go anyway, but the weekend turned up and we was made aware via an email that we was unsuccessful on our ticket um, ballot. Uh, Jessica did phone up and uh, speak to a lovely lady on the phone who said that there could be cancellations, so don't never say never. And uh, if there's any cancellations, they will let me or Jess know via telephone or email. Um, it is now obviously Tuesday. Uh, they did say, Manchester United did say they was going to call us yesterday if there's any news or if there's any um, spare tickets available. Unfortunately, there was no call. So I'm assuming that we won't be going to the actual game tonight. But I'm not going to say no for definite because Jess is going to call them at 8 o'clock in the morning when they open just to see if there's any stray tickets laying around that we can get our hands on. But I've come to sort of accept that I won't be going, but I've pat packed my United top just in case if uh, we get the call because like I said, the hotel is only a six minute walk from the stadium. So as long as I find out by say quarter past five, 20 past five, we can still go. Um, so I'm gonna stop waffling on now uh, because it's getting on a bit. Uh, we've got to uh, catch the train from here to London at seven o'clock, I believe. We have a coach booked from the, uh, what was it, London Victoria coach station at 9 a.m. Uh, we did look at other modes of transport. We was gonna drive, but then with petrol and with parking, it was coming to 80 quid. And we just, doesn't, we just don't have that at the moment, especially with me not working. We looked at a train and that was even more expensive. That was only 160 pounds. So we came up with the idea of looking at National Express. Uh, it wasn't ideal to be honest because obviously with Jesse's conditions and stuff, uh, traveling for five hours on a National Express is not gonna be good for her. But we booked it because we found a price which was brilliant, which was, um, I think it was 11 pound return. So that's 550 there and 550 back. So I think that works out about two pounds 75 each, which, you could even get into London for that price. Obviously, we've got to get a train into London, but even with that, it was still considerably a lot cheaper than the driving or the train. Uh, we did have some concerns with National Express because we wasn't sure with the COVID going around and obviously social distancing and mask wearing and obviously with Jessica's conditions, we wasn't sure if it was gonna be ideal. 
But we booked it anyway, and then the next day Jessica um, called National Express, told them her situation, told her what her conditions were, and to be honest, they've been absolutely fantastic. From start to finish, as soon as Jessica called them and told them about her concerns and her conditions, they have done whatever they can just to ensure that Jess has a safe trip. I mean, the trip itself is five hours and ten minutes, which is a lot for, say, anyone to be travelling on a coach. But for Jess, you can imagine it's going to be a lot harder to be sitting down for that long a time. Uh, with her conditions. So once Jess has spoken to National Express about her fears and concerns, they've done everything they can. And I must say, hands up to National Express because uh, you do hear about these companies that are not friendly for disabilities and that, but they have done whatever they can and done above and beyond uh, the call of service for Jessica and myself. So I just wanna tell you what these were. I've written them down just so I get it right and do National Express justice because they've been fantastic. So what Jess and I have got on a normal bog standard ticket is we've got uh, selected disability seats with extra leg room which will be absolutely fantastic for Jess and myself. Uh, we will be first on the coach before anyone else gets on which is brilliant, thank you for that. The coach will not be full so Jess was a bit worried that they're going to be like 50 or 60 people on the coach. Um, you know, and obviously with COVID going around, she thought it could be a bit iffy about doing that, but they've gave us a word that they're not booking the full capacity of the coach. It's gonna be half full or even under half, and it's all gonna be socially distanced and mask wearing as well, which obviously was one of Jessica's big concerns. Uh, we've also been told that the toilet on board, which is very important for Jess, uh, with her gastroparesis and stuff, that the toilet on board will be available and it has been deep cleaned and it will be cleaned spotless because we'll be the first people on that coach of the day. So it's gonna be pristine clean and will be accessible for Jess. Uh, we have also told that uh, we have got access to the National Express Lounge where there will be guaranteed seats for us. Just in case when we get to the terminal itself and it's quite busy and there's no seats. So obviously Jess can't stand up for too long. So we've been given access to the lounge, which is brilliant. And we'll always, and we'll also be escorted from the lounge to the coach by one of the team members, I imagine, when it's time. And obviously, like I said, we'll be the first on there so we haven't got a queue up. So, and that also applies to the return journey as well from Manchester back to London, which is fantastic. So thank you very much, National Express. We really, really appreciate that. And it's really put mine and Jessica's mind at rest. But as you can see now, it is now getting on for six o'clock and we've got a train to catch in an hour. So I'm gonna go now, stop waffling, and we'll check back in with you later.
finally made it to the mobility lounge. Yep. Coffee facilities. Yeah, disabled toilet, plugs to charge your phone, friendly staff. friendly staff, and there's a Greg's next door. Oh, yeah. Did you get a Greg's when yeah. you cook? Let's see. Tea. And I got <laughs> a bacon roll, didn't I? Bacon well? roll, yeah. Booking fees. It's a hassle free way to manage your bookings with us. Now please sit back, relax, and enjoy your journey with National Express. Welcome on board this National Express service. Your safety is our number one priority. Please listen carefully to these messages about our procedures that will help keep you and our drivers safe during travel. Face coverings and masks. It is a legal requirement for all customers to wear a face covering and So we've just arrived at Norton Kane services. We're about halfway through our National Express journey to Manchester. Wayne may have mentioned earlier that we couldn't get tickets due to the ballot and also due to no accessible seating. But Michael at the accessibility department at Manchester United has kindly given us a cancellation set of tickets. Wayne would have come on camera to tell you this he's gone to get a drink he is just over the moon and speechless right now he hasn't been to a Manchester United game since before lockdown and Manchester United means the world to him so thank you so much to Michael and Manchester United for making sure that Wayne could go back to his favourite place on the planet and for making sure that he gets to watch his team play at home for the last game of the season at home so fingers crossed they absolutely beat Fulham. I'm a Liverpool supporter so it doesn't really bother me as much but to see the smile on Wayne's face and this is basically a thank you from me to you Wayne for everything you have done for me over this past year and making sure that I am really looked after. So let's hope that you have a really good match and that they win and we can go and have a lovely evening in Manchester. Left or right? They're so excited. You can't even get your words I out. Get, I can't even get my words out. I think out. you can tell, guys, he's very, very happy. I'm hot, flustered, excited, <laughs> delirious, tired, <laughs> all mixed into one. There's some prices. We're at the Ibis Budget Salford Key, so you can buy amenity kits if you want any shampoo. Right, what room are we in? 614. 614. So, 614. No, you're going wrong no, way. No, wrong way. <laughs> you go in front first, because then you can yeah. open the door. 616, 614 right there. Okay. All right, join us. Oh, this is nice. So we've just arrived at the Ibis Budget in Salford Keys in Manchester. 
the sun is out, it's cracking the flags and Wayne got a ticket. It's a very, very good day so far. But I just thought before we completely trash the room that we would give you a room tour and show you what the amenities are because we have a disability access room just in case I need a little bit more support and a little bit more access. So if I just flip the camera around and show you what we have in this room. So this is the door, pretty standard. And as you come in, you have a full length mirror. Hi everyone. And you have two little coat hooks on either side, which is great. So if you are going on a night out, you can see what you're wearing. And if I just pan you round, you have plenty of room for wheelchair access. It's absolutely massive. It's probably the width of that double bed. And then if you come over to the opposite side of the room near the mirror, you have a shelf with some more hangers. We've just put our coats on there so they're out of the way. And then there's a lower shelf, which is good as well, which is good for people who need to access shelves from their wheelchair. We've got plenty of space here for your suitcases. And then you have a mini little bedside table. And this bed is a lot lower than a normal bed in the hotel because again, this is a wheelchair access room. So as you can tell, when I sit down, it's nice and easy just for me to sit down if you had a wheelchair. There's plenty of space right here for you to transfer. So if I just take you around to the other side of the room, there is another little bedside. And then here, there are some fixtures, so you do have lights, you can turn them on and off from your bed, which is very, very handy. We've got some lovely artwork on the wall, and then in the corner of the room, there is a dressing table or a desk with a chair, and there are two plug sockets. Now, the only thing that is a pet peeve of mine and Wayne's is that there are no plug sockets near the bed on either side and there aren't any by the mirror which is a little bit annoying so the only thing that is irritating is if you, if you do have a wheelchair there's only one space to charge it which is right in the corner of this room which i do find a little bit odd but again there's still plenty of floor space there is a nice window we've opened it because as i've said it is so pretty outside it's gone a little bit overcast now but we've got a pretty good location we've got a garage there which has a subway and a starbucks so for all you starbucks fans out there we are in a really good location we've also got a pretty good sized television so i'm sure wayne will have this side of the bed because he'll probably watch television when i'm asleep and then probably the most important thing for me is the bathroom so if i just show you the bathroom i was struggling to get in there then so we've got a bath chair, which is handy. We've got an accessible shower, which is great. The toilet and the sink. So as again, I've said, it's a disability access room. So it's not gonna look as glamorous as all of, all of the other rooms. It also has a safety cord for emergencies and it also has plenty of pull down handrails, which for some reason don't wanna work. So I'm a little confused bit confused but and there's also a trash can on the floor so i'm going to enjoy our time in the hotel i'm gonna let wayne come back inside i did just say to them mm. there's a couple of things that don't work in here okay. which is a little bit annoying the handrail doesn't work in the bathroom and there's no plug sockets near the bed so if you're wearing a wheelchair oh, you don't yeah. have one place to charge it but we can't complain because we paid, I we, think... I think I paid £31 and then about £1.50 tax. So I think it was about 33 quid. But we, it is a basic room, yeah. isn't it? It is pretty basic. But, but we're on a budget. But the location and the price, and it's got everything we need, isn't it? it yeah. Has, it's got everything we need. So And it's really clean as well. Yeah, I'm impressed with it. it. It does what it says on the tin, really, doesn't it? So, yeah, yeah we're going to enjoy this now, aren't we? I'm going to have a shower in it because I'm... Hot and bothered. from the coach trip and I just want to show you something which has made my day even more and you mentioned about Starbucks and stuff like no. that <laughs> so I don't know if you can see but just above there is Old Trafford you can just about make out the top there it's probably not going to show up but that's just made my day even more exciting you can barely even see it but it's literally like tips of the um, yeah the stadium the roof, honestly yeah. i've never seen him this happy you can see the smile on his face 
Honestly, look look at the camera. He's just so excited. Right, we're going to go now and we're going to chill. And we'll probably be back with you when we are ready to leave the hotel in about an hour or so. We're just going to relax and get dolled up for the night because we are going out for dinner and drinks. We're not too sure about dinner. It might just be a hot dog at the stadium. Yeah. Right? But we will see you later. Bye. Exclusively by disabled supporters on non-match days, the Ability Suite is used as a learning and training centre for disabled people, local colleagues and Manchester United. The suite is for use by appropriate ticket holders only. Please respect this and use other kiosks for refreshments. You've got a TV so you can also watch the match inside. They don't serve refreshments inside during the match but you can come in at half time and they tend to clean this area and keep it very sterile. They also have plenty of refreshments. There's even a spare kettle for filling up water. And there is also another TV at the other end of the cafe. <laughs> and there's plenty of offers of snacks in here that can be consumed in here or at your seat. And plenty of beers also, and here are the prices. There's also a first aid station if you need support by St John's Ambulance, and there's plenty of hand sanitizer also. So this is your little section out here with plenty of toilets. And there's also more disabled toilets out here also. So overall, the disability access area is amazing. There's toilets here too. You can have drinks and food in there. And as you walk around the corner, it takes you straight to the pitch. So I'm going to walk out now and show you the pitch from the disability access area. And it's also showing Manchester United Oh, yeah. Manchester United Disabled Supporters Association. <laughs> and this is the whole outside disability area, and you have an amazing view. very much thank you
Just got back from the game. We're just getting changed into some of our glad rags because we've got a bar uh, Yates, I think, uh, booked at the print works for 9.15. So we're going to have a few drinks, uh, maybe a little dance, get a little bit merry. Uh, if anyone's interested, the game finished 1-1. One, one. Uh, it was a brilliant day, even just to get out, to be honest. We're, regardless of the score, Cavani scored an absolute perler of a goal, 40 yards out, lobbed the keeper. So even if we'd lost, it would still been a brilliant day. We're not taking the camel with us, obviously, for... Uh, drunken reasons because I'm planning to get a little bit tipsy tonight so we're gonna film a little bits on our phone here there and everywhere and then obviously we'll let you know once we're back in the room end the vlog and then uh, Jess will upload it for the week uh, for next Wednesday so we're gonna leave you now guys and we'll see you later St Peter's Square we've got to get off Oh, well, once I get The next stop will be Exchange Coop. Oh, you're filming? Yeah. <laughs> so, where are we? We're in Weatherspoons. We thought we were going to have a big night out, but we're too old and yeah. realised that no one else is out on a Tuesday. So, we're in our favourite place, Weatherspoons. We've ordered the same old meals. <laughs> Yeah. We've got all dressed up for nothing. We're gonna eat this and go and cuddle up in bed. <laughs> Eye on your brand, a little bit drunkies. This is probably about my fifth or sixth and I've got one there. Non alcoholic. And Jess is on non alcoholic like because stuff, because nice. of her beta blockers, but this is probably my fifth or sixth. So um, I'm all, I'm off cut as it is. <laughs> Huh? Last meal. Yeah. Cool. Chips are fit, aren't they? We're going to enjoy this now and we'll check back in with you later, guys. So we're back in the room now. We were meant to get the train from Printworks to Salford Keys, but my feet were killing. I haven't worn heels in, Months now, I think, it? a year and a half. And the ones I did put on were really crippling. I've got blisters the size of my face. Wayne had hiccups really bad because I was starting to be a bit of a grouch and just wanted to leave so he downed his pint so now he's got really bad hiccups but he's got two cups of tea. I'm just about to take my makeup off. I've just packed everything away because I'm a big believer on literally scragging your hair up and going. I'm all for being glamorous the way there to a destination but on the way home I couldn't care. So at the moment it's like that. I'm going to take my makeup off. Wayne's gonna drink his tea. I'm probably going to go to bed in about 15 minutes and we are going to enjoy this hotel till about five minutes before we have to leave, which is lunchtime tomorrow. It's been a really good day, hasn't it? Really good day. It's been a very, very odd day, to be honest. We don't yeah. usually have good news like well, this, do we? Well, no, we was, obviously we traveled up here today on a, obviously we traveled up here today on a coach, not knowing if we was gonna get a ticket and then we got a ticket. Unfortunately, it wasn't the score that I wanted it to be. We are obviously I wanted to win, but a draw guarantees second spot, so that's fine with me. And that goal was insane. Oh, that goal! Oh, I could I could keep watching it all day. And then was it from the halfway line? No, oh. it's about 40, 45 yards away. That's a shame. And then we hit our local 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 our local Yates, and then went to Weatherspoons for a few drinks and some food. And then, like just said earlier, we got an Uber back because we missed the last tram. We're now chilling in the hotel now, making full use of it. Uh, it is now, what is it? 10 past 12? I haven't got a clue. Yeah, 10 past 12 and we're going to call it a night soon because uh, we haven't, didn't get much sleep last night, did we? I had about two hours sleep, mm. got up this morning and washed my hair because I just wanted to just quickly curl it today. Wayne hasn't even been to bed. No, I didn't go to bed last night because I was too excited. Sunday night. Yeah. So I'm sure he's going to sleep like a little angel and we want to get home we're probably not going to be home until at least 10 o'clock tomorrow night so we're going to wake up we're going to get the tram into um central manchester possibly looking primark 
we're going to go back to Printworks to see where we can eat locally. Yeah. We want to eat... Um, we fancy pizza, don't we? That's what we fancy. Yeah, fancy, Pizza but. Hut, because there's a variety of things, but I'm thinking Frankie and Benny's, because I might be able to have something light on the menu. Mm. Um, um, I have got my shakes with me, so I can have yeah. them. I might just buy two bottles of milk from um, McDonald's. And then we've got our coach booked back for London Victoria at 3pm, haven't we? So yeah. that's going to be another five hour trip. But once again, they've looked after us well, haven't they? So We can't, honestly, we can't thank National Express, Manchester, um, the Ibis Hotel that we're in have been amazing. I've just been down and asked, could we have two extra pillows? Because before I had the cafe to put in, I would literally sleep as flat as a pancake. I was going to say it's flat as something else, mm -hmm. <laughs> a bit inappropriate. Yeah. Um, but I have to sleep quite high, so we're always fighting over the pillows. And um, without waffling on too much, yeah, they've basically looked after us. So I'm actually going to enjoy the coach home tomorrow because there's a few things that I want to watch that I haven't been able to watch while Wayne's been bothering me the past eight months while he's been made redundant. And we were pretty much just on the phone back and forth, back and forth to... Manchester United and then we were so lucky we got the last two accessible tickets which when we got there there was actually so many seats but then when I think about it they've left a lot of it empty for particular reasons and I completely understand why but if we go back I'm not sure whether we'll get seats like that again. No, not that good, I don't think. They were just, it doesn't really bother me, but I had a really good time. <laughs> At one point, I was like, come on, <laughs> screaming. But yeah, it was nice to support Wayne's team. It was nice to see a smile on his face. Mm. And I'm glad that I was able to give him that amazing opportunity. Thank because you. you're welcome. We are going to go now because it's getting to that point where I'm waffling on a load of utter garbage. Wayne's sitting here with no top on and i don't want to go any lower because it's not appropriate i'm in my nighty so we will see you tomorrow night Bye. So we've just come down to the reception for some breakfast and obviously due to COVID um, protocols, uh, there is no hot breakfast or anything like that. They bring a tray out for you. So I just thought I'd pop on and show you what we got for our breakfast. This was £5.50. Not the shake. Not the shake, obviously what Jess is making, that's her own thing. So you get a bowl of cereal, some warm pastries. Milk. Uh, pretty much a carton of milk. Just handy for people with dietary problems. Yeah, you get a... That is a apple juice, you get a hot drink, jam and uh, butter and a piece of fruit. And obviously this is the same because it's one tray fits all sort of thing. Uh, they normally do egg and bacon and sausages and all that jazz, but obviously due to um, COVID, they can't have like a buffet section. So they literally just bring a tray out to us like this. And this was 550. So it's not too bad, for but five pounds, not bad it's not all. too bad. I mean, it's not the greatest, but it will do for us for now. So we're going to tuck into this now and we'll let you know how it went. We are just about to leave this amazing room. It's been a blast. Bye room. Bye room. Bye. <laughs> we don't want to go home, do we? <laughs> no. And for anyone interested, we were in disability room 614. Right, let's go and get us And it's right near. Mm, both sets of lifts, it's quite handy. Both sets of lifts. It's on floor six, but that shouldn't be a problem for people with mobility issues.
that's it now still. So we're just at the tram stop now, uh, waiting to go back into the city centre. The plan is to go and get some lunch because we're both quite hungry. And then we need to find a shop to get some packed lunch or some food for the coach. And then we're going to make our way round to the National Express uh, Disabled Lounge and chill in there until our coach is ready at 3 p.m. The time now is, was it 12 o'clock, isn't it? Yeah, 12 o'clock. We've just checked out of the hotel, as you can see there behind me. So um, it's been a brilliant uh, couple of days. Uh, wouldn't change it for the world. It's just nice getting back to some sort of normal life, really. It's been really nice. Despite the result and despite the bad weather it is here today, it's been a brilliant day. We're just in our local Primark, in not our local Primark, sorry, the Manchester Primark, and there is loads of Lilo and Stitch stuff. They've got car headdress pillows, bags for your car, they've got neck pillows, they've got a whole section around Bambi. We've got Fumper eye masks, phone cases. We've got a massive Lilo and Stitch section. We've got cups, lunch boxes, teddy bears. We've got this massive tropical section with these backpacks and they've got picnic cases, water coolers, picnic blankets. You're doing really well, Primark. Whole Winnie the Pooh section. There's the main man. And then your general Mickey and Minnie Primark section that everywhere's got at the moment. Massive mini pillows, t shirts, pillows, bags, umbrellas, more car stuff, eye masks, more Winnie the Pooh. And then they've got the whole of the pastel section that they have in most shops as well. They've got t-shirts, pyjamas, shorts, underwear, slippers. So there's lots in this Primark. Loads. I love these. These pyjamas or tracksuit bottoms are so lovely. I love the pastel colours. And then they've got some mannequins here just so you can see what the clothes look like on them. Face to face in this trashy bar Another pleasant I am going places Makes me laugh about the irony of everything I like the way of thinking I don't really care about the music on the dance floor I don't really mind all the smoke is in the bathroom
Need a break. Need I've a break. Old bones, now. old bones. I got some cracking footage of the trams and stuff. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's gorgeous. Can't not film a Manchester pigeon, they're absolutely everywhere. <laughs> we need to head back to the um, National Express now, don't we? Yeah, we'll go in a minute. So say goodbye then. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Our coach has just arrived. We've been allocated the disabled seats again. It does say Manchester on it, but that is ours going to London, the 540. And we should arrive about eight o'clock tonight. So we will see you in London. And as you can see, it is highlighted London. Woohoo! That's not a woohoo. I do not want to go home yet. No, I don't want to go either. Trevi, we'll see you later, Trevi. Uh, we'll see you soon, Sam. See you soon, Trev. We should be boarding in about five minutes, I think. First people on the coach. Priority boarding. <laughs> in London. It's well zoomed in. Sorry. <laughs> right, we're gonna chill. seconds to recognize us no so we've just got home it's about 10 o'clock we thought trevi was going to welcome us with open paws but we just got a load of teeth and gums and 
angry meows he wasn't happy in the slightest we think he suffers with a little bit of separation anxiety but usually when we go away for one night we just leave him be and then we're back the next day but Wayne's brother Matt kindly popped around to feed him so I don't know what he's angry for he seems okay now he's got some ham and he's been given some cuddles so he'll relax Wayne wants to apologize for not being in this part of the video I am going to end the video here because we're absolutely shattered Wayne's gone to have a shower to wash the city off of him because it just knackers us out I'm just gonna have a shower once the carers have been tomorrow and yeah, I just wanted to say what an amazing weekend we've had. And I wanted to thank a lot of the people who made this last 24 hours such an amazing experience for both Wayne and I. Now, I haven't been anywhere other than to the hospital. I've been to Alton Towers for one night last year and we went to Warwick Castle. But other than that... Manchester's the furthest I've been away from Hertfordshire and down south. I saw my family for a little bit last year, but that was when we were completely out of lockdown. And that was before I got really poorly too. So it didn't really bother me too much. I didn't really have much wrong in the point where I couldn't travel. And then after I got sick, my health just declined really badly and I had to shield and all that palaver. So when Wayne and I knew we were going to go to Manchester, there was a lot of precautions that needed to be put in place and a lot of um, safety things that we needed to basically just make sure that our journey was easy. So the first port of call was the bus. Now, we wanted to get the train. I usually get the train when I travel up to see my family in the Wirral near Liverpool, which is where I'm from. And it's usually really great, but the trains were coming in at like £65 each. And this was just meant to be... A quick trip up to Manchester for one night and there was no way I'm paying £65 and I know the train is probably a lot safer and a lot quicker but we looked into National Express and I thought well we're going to be social distance we're going to be sat at the front hopefully so once we purchased the tickets which cost I think £12 <laughs> for both of us it was £12 for the whole return journey this journey back from Manchester to London costs like £2.75 each. You can't even buy a coffee in London for £2.75, never mind the bus journey to Manchester. And that's like a good five hour journey, so that is amazing. I know they're probably trying to entice you to get back on the buses. But when I did ring up National Express to speak to the accessibility department, I spoke to a lovely lady called Anna, who I'd like to give a massive thank you to. She made sure that Wayne and I were on the same seats, traveling to and from Manchester so when you go on a National Express bus the driver's seat is on the right hand side because of obviously in the UK we drive on the right hand side and then on the left hand side of the bus there is a singular seat for wheelchair users and they will help you on the bus if you are in a wheelchair they can hoist you they've got ramps they've got stairs they can do whatever they need to do to make sure that you can get on the bus safely and then behind the single wheelchair seat there is two seats with leg room and they are 2a and 2b and they are the seats for people who need assistance like myself and Wayne so they placed us in those seats and when we also got to London Victoria there was the mobility access lounge where people with mobility issues or disabilities can sit there's a little coffee machine in there you'll have seen that earlier in the vlog at the beginning of the vlog and they basically made sure that we were escorted to our bus and that we were able to board first which was amazing just so I didn't have to wait in line which was really good of them and they also have wheelchairs in there as well if you do need to have a bit of support to travel from the mobility lounge to the um, bus because for example, when I used to travel with Megabus, it'd be at gate 18, 19 and 20. And that is it right at the other end of the um, Victoria coach station. And I wouldn't be able to do that with all the hustle and bustle. Obviously, it was really quiet this time. It was the first day that anyone could travel anywhere on planes across the country. So I presume there's still a lot of people who are quite wary. So that's why it was probably very quiet. And I'd also like to thank the staff at the Mobility Access Lounge who were really helpful. They allowed us to film in there so we could show you guys what it's like. And I'd also like to thank the gentleman who helped us on the bus and made sure that we were comfortable. The bus was really clean. 
um, there was plenty of hand sanitizer and it was just an overall brilliant experience. Even when we left Chalton Street coach station in Manchester today, they made sure that we were first on the coach and that we had access to the seats. So thank you for that. National Express, you were really, really helpful and supportive and especially Anna. Now, secondly, we would like to thank Steph at Manchester United who worked tire tirelessly on um, Sunday, Monday, yesterday to make sure that Wayne and I could get a ticket because we were unsuccessful in the Manchester United ballot. Also, we were unsuccessful in the um, limited capacity seating. They did go on sale on Monday evening. All customers would have got a text around 20 past 10 to say that there were a few tickets left. And because we have an accessibility membership, we weren't able to access a ticket, which was a little bit gutting. But we emailed the accessibility department and we got a fantastic email from a gentleman called Michael yesterday who gave us the last two accessibility seats in the whole of Manchester United Stadium at Old Trafford. And if it wasn't for Steph at Manchester United and Michael and all the other staff who answered the phone because I was on and off the phone because the signal was crazy on the motorway going to Manchester yesterday. But if it wasn't for them, Wayne wouldn't have been able to get those amazing seats. We were literally sat like one row from the bit where the, oh God, what's it called? I'm so tired. The bit where you take a corner from basically. And we were sat right there and the view was fantastic. And Wayne was so happy that he got to see that goal by um, Cavani because it was a really epic goal. He was a bit gutted that they drew 1-1 with Fulham. But overall, the experience was fantastic. The staff, the stewards, the staff in the Ability Lounge were just unbelievable. And we can't thank Manchester United enough for all of their support. I did actually ring Steph back today to let her know that we got a ticket and she said we couldn't have had two more deserving people um get these tickets and we were so grateful that they were given to us they could have been given to anybody on the list and there probably were a lot more people who were more deserving than Wayne and I but they felt that we deserved the tickets and they wanted Wayne and I to have an amazing time and even though I'm not a Manchester United supporter I had a fantastic time and I did have a secret little cheer and I did tell my dad and he wasn't the best pleased but he knows how much Wayne needed this and I wanted to thank Wayne for all of his support. We didn't get this ticket for free, we did pay £30 but because Wayne is my carer he gets a complimentary ticket so for anyone who is desperate to go Sorry about that. The uh, battery sign showed up. My battery's running low, so I will keep this short and sweet. But for anyone who is wanting to go to any sort of football game or Premier League match, I'm not sure if this is the same for every club, but I do know with Manchester United memberships, and I'm not talking about season tickets. These are just general memberships where you can get general sale tickets that anyone who has a registered carer can get a free ticket, a complimentary ticket. So I have what's called a accessibility membership where I am the disabled person and I get to sit in the accessibility areas at Manchester United where the views are just insane. You have your own entrance, you have your own little cafe which is called the Ability Lounge which you would have seen earlier and you also have your own little entrance to the certain areas of the pitch also where the views are just spectacular like we couldn't have been any closer to the game like we saw a lot of the players up close seeing the likes of Pog Pogba and Rashford up close was really amazing and again as I've said I know I'm not a Man United supporter but it was amazing to see these so such talented players live and knowing that it was the last home game of the season and it was the first match where there was like 10,000 fans that stadium hasn't had fans in it for at least a year and a half now so I'm so grateful that Wayne got to experience that so thank you Manchester United for everything that you've done for us and hopefully we will see you again next season as we are going to extend our membership our membership does run out at the end of May but we will 
be extending that for the 2021-2022 season. Hopefully I'll catch a Liverpool game and I'll get to watch um, Liverpool spank Manchester United. <laughs> and then lastly, we would like to thank the staff at the IBIS Budget Hotel in Salford Keys. We also made sure that we had an accessibility room or a disabled room and the staff were also amazing there too. The hotel was great. They were so supportive. At one point last night, I think it was about 11 o'clock, the alarm at the side of the bed did go off accidentally. Um, and we thought it was us, but it did go off again about three in the morning, which wasn't a major issue. We just turned it off. But the guy was straight up to the room to check that we were both OK and that we didn't need any assistance. So it was so prompt and so quick. And the hotel was fantastic. And I think it cost about £33. And that's really good considering um, it was a football night. But the price did go up, I think, to about £45. But again, on match night, literally like not even a mile walk from the ground. It's really good. So overall, we've had a fantastic weekend. <laughs> God, weekends, we've had a fantastic break. It was short and sweet. The weather was a bit all over the place, but the highlight for me was seeing Wayne smile on his face when he got to watch his dream team play the last home game of the season. So on that note, I am going to leave it there because I've just waffled on for 11 minutes and 38 seconds and I'm shattered. Oh, and thanks to Matt, Wayne's brother as well. He did pop in today um, to feed Trevi, which was really unexpected and it was really kind of him. And he did also bring us these, which I'd like to show you. I'm not sure if they're on the shelves yet, but Matthew did kindly get us these, which are the best ever. These are called Joe Nuts and they are Jaffa Cake Donuts. And oh my God, Wayne and I are going to tuck into these tonight. I am on a strict diet as of tomorrow, um, but I just wanted to have two last days of enjoying myself because as I said, my appointment in the last vlog was not something that I was expecting. My health isn't the best, so I've enjoyed myself. I've been responsible, but I'm going to have one or two of these tonight watching Corrie and watching our programmes. And as anybody caught Innocent as well, it's been on telly this week. It's absolutely amazing. I don't know the actress's name. Sorry about that. I just, my battery's literally going to go. I just want to say this one last thing. It's called Innocent. It's series two. And it's got the actress in it who played Becky. And for anyone who watches Corrie, it's Kylie Platt's sister. But I can't remember her name. Wayne, what's Becky's name in Corrie? Huh? What's Becky's name in Coronation Street? Becky's name, um, oh, a real name? Yeah. Catherine, something, isn't it? I don't know, but it's Catherine. But anyway, yeah, if you want to watch Innocent, I think, is it on ITV? Yeah. Yeah, it's on the ITV player, so I'm so excited to watch that tonight. Um, But yeah, you can catch that on the ITV hub. So we're going to tuck into these, these Joe Nuts. I think they're in tes Tesco. Um, Catch them. They're about £1.50 and you get like two packs in there, but I can't wait to get them so for anyone who loves jaffa cakes they're now made with donuts which is just insane so i'm going to go because my phone's about to die so please give this video a huge thumbs up if you have enjoyed it i do apologize that it's been all about man united so please don't unsubscribe to us if you do enjoy our content please hit that notification bell and if you really really love us and again haven't been put off by manchester united content please slam that subscribe button we would really appreciate your support and now that we are in the third area of the roadmap we have got so much more exciting content to bring you which we're really excited about so thank you so much for watching we are going to go now because my words are slurring and i'm exhausted so we will see you next week bye guys do you miss me at